you know, normally I record these intros and I'm like, oh, uh, maybe not today. So what do we talk about today? Um, I made a confession in today's episode, one that made me sweat and a little uncomfortable, but I'm glad that it's out. And uh, after that confession, I actually shared six ways to tactically increase your brain's ability to learn, which will rocket fuel your results. And if you put them into practice every single place in your life, I guarantee you your life will be astronomically better in a matter of days. I can make that claim because it actually works. That's what I talk about in today's episode. So I feel like I can't even do today's episode justice in the intro. So I hope this is enough to get you to listen. But then I've actually really thought about this. Who actually listens to intros and then does or doesn't listen based on the intro? I don't know. I really, really don't know because I feel like no intro can ever fully convey what's in an episode. So you got to at least give the episode a little bit of love. But either way, I'm going to shut up now. So let's cue the intro and then let's get into the episode. All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Mind of George Show. And today's episode is probably going to be a little bit different uh, because I have a confession. Um, So first, last week was the first episode of this new format. And I'm so excited because it feels so aligned and congruent to who I am. It feels more like me. And I'm going to talk more about that in a minute in the confession. But today's quote, today's peace, today's focus for you. And I want you to listen to this. This is imperative to understand. And I'm getting emotional already before I'm even saying this. And it's going to sound so simple. And yet it has had the most profound impact on me, my results, and a whole lot of other people that I help and work with, including my teachers, mentors, and coaches. And it's this, you cannot sacrifice yourself and expect to win. You cannot sacrifice yourself and expect to win. Now, right now in my brain, because I don't really script these shows, I have 10 different ways to explain this to you. I see it all the time. There's this amazing book by Jamie Smart called The Little Book of Clarity that talks about toxic thinking. Right? But I see this all the time and I was the same way. Okay, I want to build a million dollar business, a $10 million business. I want to have this and this and this and this and this. And then the truth is when it came, I wasn't healthy enough to maintain it because I was sacrificing my life to build a business that was going to give me the illusion of something I thought I wanted, but I wouldn't have the capacity to live it. I was sacrificing my life to build a business instead of building a business that supported my life. And I see this all the time. And another analogy for you, let's use a, let's use a boat, right? Because we're lighthouses here, okay? You're like, I want to sail my boat around the world. I'm like, awesome. That's so awesome. But every time you don't sleep, it pokes a hole in the boat. Every time you sacrifice yourself, it posts a hole in the boat. Every time you ignore your health, it posts a hole in the boat. Every time you make reactive emotional decisions, it posts a hole in the boat. And then you're like, no, I got it. You get in your boat to sail the world and you're exhausted, mentally fatigued, fogged, and then you end up stuck in the middle of the ocean and you drown. You cannot sacrifice yourself and expect to win. And this includes my confession time. This includes in your authenticity, in your alignment to yourself, to your core beliefs, and to your values. Meaning that at the end of the day, the only relationship you have is the one with yourself. And it is the most important one. And to this day, I still find myself in moments or pockets where I go against my intuition or I sacrifice my morals or values by just remaining silent or avoiding a situation because it's too hard or I'm not ready to stand in the resistance. But then I get upset that for the next week or month, I'm unhappy, the results weren't there, and I'm sad. And it's because I sacrificed myself. I sacrificed what I believed in. 
I sacrificed what was important and imperative to me. We would never let our children, our significant others, those that we care about, sacrifice themselves. But yet, it's something that I watch us do over and over and over, and myself included. And so why am I so excited about this new podcast format? Well, because this is me. I loved doing the Monday show, the Wednesday show, the Friday show, but they were scripted. Not like scripted, but my team was like, do this. And there were times it felt forced and it felt like it wasn't fun. And if you listen to the episode last week or on Friday, I think, uh, with Joe and Matt, we got into it. And I love this podcast. Like this is my mission. Like I will forever help human beings unlock their potential in whatever form that is. But I also have been hiding behind that. Because I've been judging myself like I can't teach breath work because I'm not the best in the world at it. Or who am I to say that? Because I'm still working on it and I'm still learning it. And I found myself accidentally falling back on that pedestal of perfection. And in turn, silencing my voice out of fear of self-judgment. And then not sharing who I really am. Like you haven't seen me post pictures of myself working out or many selfies. Because I got sad and I gained some weight. And I'm okay with that. And I'm actually proud of the fact that I'm working back in a healthy way, but I haven't shared it out of fear of self-judgment, which prevents me being authentic in here. And so this podcast is about my story and my journey to guide you. And one of my wisest teachers said to me a long time ago, I was like, who am I? Who am I? Who am I? And he looked me dead in the eye and he said, name me one Olympic athlete that doesn't have a coach. And I was like, well, I can't. And he's like, well, name me one of the coaches that has a gold medal. I was like, I can't do that either. He's like, you don't have to master the game to know how to play it. You don't have to have performed every play in the book perfectly to be able to teach somebody. And I was like, wow. And he's like, share your journey. And I was like, ah, and I needed to be reminded of that. And so for me, part of sacrificing myself is it feels like a sacrifice when I don't share all parts of me because it feels manipulative. It feels positioned. It feels... Uh, Like I'm hiding in plain sight. And so today, as of me recording this, it's a Monday, um, I did a live on Instagram on my new series that I'm doing every Monday called Mindful Mondays, where I share how I'm actually feeling and the tools I'm actually using and the practices that I'm putting into practice. As I continue to grow and I'm a student of this work, I'm going to be sharing my journey in this podcast. This podcast is a part of it. And so today's episode, Your Focus is understanding that you will never win if you sacrifice yourself in the process. And so I'm going to be sharing in this episode six ways, six ways to increase your ability to practice, to honor yourself, to get in touch with yourself, to find your intuition, to eliminate toxicity from your life and actually scientifically proven to increase your brain's ability to learn. Like, i.e. to to super fuel your brain. Like if you ever saw that movie with uh, Bradley Cooper, Limitless, you can naturally do that. There are ways in your life to utilize your superpower, your brain, and supercharge it. And so before we get there, uh, one of the tips that I'm going to share with you in silence, and I spent some time in silence today. Um, so I woke up this morning um, really, really, really unhappy. Um, we're moving again today. It's like our eighth home in the last five months. I have a 16-year-old daughter, a four-year-old son, an amazing wife. We picked up our family and moved. We picked up and said, we're leaving everything that we know to go into this new world and create something new. And we are. And it's scary at times. And it's really, really scary when it's hard to find housing um, because of you know last year, We don't really, we can't buy a home. We kept our real estate, but there was no rentals available. So we've been Airbnb-ing it. So we're doing a 50-minute commute each way, twice a day to get the kids to the school they want in gymnastics while searching for homes. We just found another one for the next six months. So we're moving today, the events next week. And so I'm happy, like this is my world, but I also feel it. And I woke up really, really sad, but it wasn't sadness that I felt. It was anger and anger is a secondary emotion. Typically, it's protecting sadness or a wound and a fear, and I haven't figured out the fear yet. 
but I was like, God, I got to go to the gym and I got to be in silent. And I also was sick last week. I had like something like strep. So I didn't work out. I increased my water. I ate right. I did what I could, but I lost that outlet. And I think it all built up and built up. And so it's like, oh, I'm going to the gym. I go to the gym and I practice silence. And I'm going to share you, share with you why and how I do this and how it's so important to you. But I'm going to tell you my takeaways first. And so in today's silence episode, what ended up happening, I want you to picture this. I get to the gym and it's leg day, right? So I'm doing legs. It's Monday. I walk up. I load the barbell. Uh, no, I don't even load the barbell. I just had the bar, the 45-pound bar, and I'm doing warm-ups. I'm doing like 20 squats with a 45-pound bar. And then I put 95 pounds on the bar. Now, I have giant tree trunk legs, right, because I'm a lighthouse. And so I have a solid base and structure to not move. But my legs are huge and I'm really strong. I can squat a lot. Um, and so 95 pounds is nothing. It's like warm up weight. It's like, I don't know, like 30% or something. Yeah. 30% of my max. So it's not hard for me. And so I put this weight on the bar and I'm in silence. I'm not listening to anything. I have my noise canceling headphones in, but not on. I just silence the gym too. I just sit there in silence and I get under the bar. And the moment I feel the load on my back, like the moment I feel that 95 pounds, It was like a metaphor, story, a symbol for the weight that I've been feeling, like the weight. And so I started to squat. And in the middle of my squat, like rep three, I started crying and I was doing 15 reps to warm up and I started crying like on the squat rack. If you're watching this video, I'm pretending I have a barbell on my back, but on the squat rack, 95 pounds, I start crying. And I'm like tears running down my face and I'm like purging and getting it out. And I I finished my 15. I went through it. I put the bar up and I had to go sit for a minute. I'm like, what was that? And it felt great. Like I felt better. My body needed to purge and release. It's like, what was that? And I was like, how ironic that I had to place that barbell on my back. I had to place that barbell on my back. And then once the weight was on my back, I got sad. And I had to think, and I was like, wow, a lot of the pressure I feel is weight that I put on my back, not that's placed on my back, that I put on my back, not that's placed on my back. And so I started to have this realization in this silence, like, wow, I'm feeling things that aren't mine. I'm taking on things that aren't mine, but I'm taking on things that are preventing me from actually supporting the pressure from actually supporting people. I was like, why? And I was like, wow. Like I'm looking for ways to find my value. And I'm like, wow, look at me trying to be the guy who can hold it all, trying to be the guy who can suffer more or endure more instead of just being the guy to live. And then, and then it hit me. And then it hit me. I realized that I was only looking for weight to bear to try to find value Because space was open because I haven't been celebrating my wins. Say that again. I figured out in my thinking myself, and you probably think I'm batshit crazy at this point, but this is what happens in my brain. Hence why it's called the Mind of George Show. I figured out that I was taking on other people's burdens and trying to endure and hold space for people and create codependent ties to people to hold their stuff. So they could be like, look, George can hold, he's valuable, he's valuable. And I was collecting my worth from that because I was advocating my own responsibility to celebrate my own wins. Like, wow, you did good today. You did this. Like, look at how amazing a husband you are, father. Like, you made this. And because I wasn't actively celebrating my wins, there was this vacuum of space that I was filling up with things that didn't support my soul. And so today's silence reminded me to celebrate every one of my wins. And in that, I realized that I haven't celebrated a lot of my wins because I feel like I'm unworthy to ask for help. I feel like I'm unworthy to celebrate. Now, that's not true. I know I'm worthy. I do a lot of work on this, but my default still feels unworthy. And so you'll see that if you follow me on social or anything else, I don't ask for a lot of things a lot. 
and that's rooted in things that I'm working through, but I also eliminate the ability for people to support me and to be close to me because asking is intimate. Asking is vulnerable. And if I'm intimate and vulnerable and then you come in, then my worth might actually just have to be on who I am as a human, not on the things that I do. And then, you know, we got a relationship, right? So the guy who teaches relationships beating algorithms needs, you know, to get to keep doing this work. And so that's where I got to. That's where I got to. And in this moment right now, I'm feeling so self-conscious, but at the same time, so proud of myself for sharing that because success is an internal game. These conversations like this one I'm having with myself is the same conversation I have with every one of my friends that is a massive high achiever. Billionaires, centimillionaires, multimillionaires. This is the stuff we talk about and it's hilarious. We laugh at each other because we take ourselves through our processes and we just witness and listen for the other person. But this is the game. And so this is the game because this and these distinctions, these, these feelings are the things that either accelerate my results or decelerate my results. Because if I am not aware of these things, if I'm not practicing self-awareness and checking my check engine light, then this stuff is underneath the surface going into everything I touch, every team call, every social media post, every podcast, every video, which energetically you can sense and it pushes people away versus when I'm clear and sharing right now, I'm in a place of confidence and freedom because I'm aware of what's going on so I can choose differently. And then that energy goes and gets put into my work and into my business and into my events. And the secret here is that we are always proactive in how we show up, not reactive to the things that are consciously happening or the things that are subconsciously happening that we haven't given ourselves the space to explore yet. And so today, <laughs> in all of that, if you can even remember all of that, um, welcome to my brain. Welcome to my brain on no caffeine and completely sober. I had to take a sip of coffee. That's where I got to. And so the two biggest takeaways for me from my silent workout, my silent workout were to, number one, celebrate wins, and number two, to ask for help. And so... In full transparency, I'm going to practice right now, and I'm going to practice by doing something I've never done. I am going to read a couple of reviews of this podcast because me reading these makes me feel extremely vulnerable. I'm celebrating my wins right in front of you, and then I have an ask for you, and I'm sure you can figure out what it is. And every episode forward, I'm going to read a review, one, maybe two. And I'm going to celebrate my wins with you because I'm on this journey with you. This is a community. Like I'm being a lighthouse. I want you on my island. I want you to be here if you want to be on the whole journey with me. And like I said earlier in my confession, I don't do well when I only share part of the journey. So this is me sharing the whole journey. And being on a part of this journey is you being on my team. And if you don't want to be on my team, I got you. I will trade you. I will call your coach and captain and I will give you a warm welcome over there and you go play on that team. But if you want to be on my team, you're going to get all of me. And so I ask if you are on my team to be on my team. So here we go. Review number one, title, worth the listen. I love George podcast. I listen to him on my way to work. I get so much value from his content. Thank you, James the Hulk. <laughs> and then I'm going to be reading you guys by your usernames because if you don't use your real name, I can't go find you, but I'm going to read you by your usernames. And then uh, Cindy2410 says, every episode is fire. I've been learning from George so much. I love his kindness and authenticity. Thank you for what you do. If you're watching this on video, you're watching my smile get bigger. Um, and you probably hear the tone of my voice changing because this is landing. Um, a Acre2020 says, Fantastic. I just recently found George in his podcast. He is real and gives actionable advice and inspiration. No fluff here. Not to mention his uplifting energy and authenticity. Every entrepreneur should listen to this podcast. Uh, and then I'm going to read one more because one more is what today's podcast is about. And then Enad67 says, create your future without excuses. You cannot sacrifice yourself and expect to win. It's gems like this that make the Mind of George podcast worth every minute invested. George is honest, sincere, and genuine. He leads with his heart and shares how to ethically scale your business. Now it's up to you to take action and make your dreams come true. Click play and subscribe. What's the best that can happen? And I love that frame. And so for those four of you that I read, thank you so much. 
I'm going to be reading reviews every single episode, so I have an ask of you. Uh, reviews help people find this show. I don't do advertisements. I don't have sponsors. And if I ever do, it will only be products that I actually physically use. You've heard me do podcasts about Soul CBD and Your Routine and High Speed Daddy because it's my company and M Park Bars and Detox Organics because those are products I actually buy and I actually use them. And so that's my rule for sponsorships. And so reviews help other people find this show. And right now the show is doing well. It's been growing. But I want more entrepreneurs to find this. I feel like I give away more than anybody else on the internet and I genuinely serve and I want more people to find it. But I can only do that with my army of light keepers, which are you. I don't have a nickname for you. You're going to have to nickname yourself. So DM me on Instagram and tell me what you want your nickname to be. Uh, all of you is uh, the old Facebook group voted on light keepers. And so I'm going to stick with that one until you give me another one, like the army of light. I'm cool with whatever, but I'm asking for your help. And so my ask right now in the middle of this episode is that you please, if you have not left a review, please take a minute out of your day and leave a review. Something you took away, an episode that you love, the guest that you love, like something um, that move the needle for you. If you could please go leave a review, that would mean the absolute world to me. And as a bonus, cause it can't happen if I don't ask, if you could please send this podcast to two to three people, you know, and send them a specific episode, send them this one and give them be like, Hey, I think this will work for you. I want you to check it out and please help me spread the word because it would mean the absolute world to me. And so that's what I got. That's my mindset in the beginning. And now I'm going to get into the six tactical ways, the six tactical, like these are six things that you can do to increase your brain's ability to learn. And I'm going to specifically focus on exercise, but movement in general, movement is one of your secret weapons. It's your body's natural ability, natural way to detox. So like a lot of people don't know, like you have a lymphatic system in your body, but your body doesn't have a drainage mechanism, which is why rebounding is so powerful. You see people bouncing on those mini trampolines. I'm pretending to be bouncing on one right now, even though there's not one under my desk, but it still works. Um, your lymphatic system doesn't drain itself and you have to drain it. Well, movement and exercise is what helps drain it. It releases endorphins. It helps detox your body. It's why we use it. But movement in general, movement in general is an absolute gift to your body. Like you should sweat every single day. And so while doing that though, and while moving and while setting, sweating, your brain is a lot more programmable. And I read a ton of studies on this, brain studies, and I think it's like 24 to 26% more impressionable when you're moving or sweating. So going for a walk, dancing, swimming, running, biking, uh, Anything that has an elevated heart rate increases your brain's ability to learn and function. And so with that, we have to protect that because our brain is our supercomputer. And what we program into that brain determines how we show up in the world. And so if you're programming that brain with guns and bitches and crappy music and sad and my life is horrible and blah, 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 while you're working out, when you go into your day, that's programming that supercomputer on how to run. And so I have been really intentional for the last three and a half years to not listen to music with any lyrics that are negative. I only listen to music that is positive, that has a good message, has a good story, helps me relate to myself. I only listen to audiobooks that are enlightening and uplifting. I only watch shows that are positive because I used to be stuck on like these murder shows and dramas and these bad videos and crash compilations. And I was like, why am I laughing at videos of people falling and then wondering why I'm a skeptic or pessimistic? Like I'm celebrating people's falls and injuries. And I was like, no. And it's something I actively practice to this day to surround myself with positivity. But what I'm going to give you is six things to actively try every single day that you're moving, exercises, or doing anything that will increase your brain's ability to learn and grow and help you develop a deep, healthy relationship with yourself so you can be proactive and work on yourself. So number one, Number one, and I alluded to it earlier, number one is silence. Number one is silence. Try it working out. I don't like being in the gym without headphones because I don't like the music and all the noise. So I actually have noise canceling in-ear headphones. This is not sponsored, but I have the Jaybird Vistas. And I put them in and I turn them on and then I don't play music. And they cancel the noise 
and then it's literally dead silence. It's like a an isolation chamber, and I work out in silence. I go for silent walks uh, out in nature. I ride my bike. Um, I'll swim in silence. I go to the sauna in silence, but I work out in silence. So number one is you practicing any movement in silence, okay? And some of the things that I'll add to that because I don't have it in here, driving, right? When you drive in the car, be 100% present with your thoughts, right? No music, no phone, shouldn't be on your phone anyways. No music, no phone, no nothing, no radio, but try silence. You have a commute coming up, try it in silence. I want you to practice being in a relationship in nothingness, right? Boredom is a skill set. Like boredom is a gift. They say one of the greatest gifts for children is boredom because boredom breeds intuitive creativity. Well, guess what? As adults, boredom can breed the same intuitive creativity as long as we lean in and use it. So number one, the first thing that you can do is practice silence. And if you're watching some video, I wrote these down in my notes. I'm looking at my notes over here. Uh, practice silence. So try it working out. Uh, try it walking. Try it driving. Try it in the shower. Wherever you find yourself turning noise from the outside world on, I want you to now create space to turn the volume from your inside voice up. So no more outside noise to lower your inside volume, turn up your inside volume by keeping the outside world silent. That's number one. Number two, be very, 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 very intentional about the audiobooks that you listen to. Be very, very, very intentional. When you are listening to somebody's words and to somebody's books, that is programming your brain. Programming your brain. And so I like to choose books that are a couple levels ahead of where I am. And I will listen to them as I progress and I grow. And I also have recognized that there's books that I've wanted to listen to, but I'm like, ah, I have that, I know that. I'll pick it up, I'm like, ah. And I was like, that's not doing me any good, so I won't listen to it. And so make sure you're very selective and intentional about the audio books that you listen to, whether it's audio, you know, podcasts like this one, I'd like to think that I'm helping your brain and your soul, uh, audio books or anything, be very intentional about what you're listening to. And I'm, I'm doing this in the lens of movement and working out, but this really applies everywhere in your life. Be very, very selectful and ask yourself, this is the question I ask myself, is this book, is this thing I'm listening to going to help me become the person I want to be or further enhance a trait that I already have and make it better? And if the answer is no, I don't listen to it. I really, really don't listen to it. So thing number two is be very intentional about your audiobooks. Thing number three, I listen to shamanic music, right? And so what do I mean by shamanic music? Well, there's a lot of deep meaning to that and it can mean a lot of things. I listen to Ikaros. If you're not familiar, don't worry. But I tend to find music from people that are very soul-centered, heart-centered, talk about self-forgiveness and the world and presence and consciousness. And then I make a playlist because their music, including their words, they make very intentional sounds with different instruments and, and frequencies to help program happiness and joy to the point where I have my four-year-old son listening to some of my favorite musicians. And I was like, BB, why do you love that song? And he's four. He's like, it makes me happy. He's like, I just feel happy. And I'll turn on this music and it'll make him dance. And he doesn't dance when there's radios on in the car and stuff like that. It's very, very intentional. And so if you want my secret playlist and my secret playlist and when I only share with my mastermind members or my friends, shoot me a DM on Instagram. You know my Instagram. It's it's George Bryant. Shoot me a DM and say, send me your playlist. And I will send you my Spotify playlist that I use every single day for my shamanic music. But I want you to be intentional about what you listen to. And I'm going to say this uh, because music will program you. Every time you listen to it, even if you're not consciously listening to it and you're cleaning or you're doing something else, it is programming your brain, which is in turn programming your nervous system and influencing how you feel, how you show up, and how you react. So thing number three is for me is when I'm practicing working out or moving or any time, I listen to shamanic music, right? So number one, silence. Number two, intentional audiobooks. Number three, shamanic music. Number four, instrumentals, like instrumentals. So my buddy Jim Quick, who's been on the show, um, has an amazing book out. Go listen to our episode on Jim, on, on this podcast with Jim Quick. But he actually talks about how to get your 
brain in a prime state by listening to opera music. And it's an absolute amazing, amazing thing because what you're giving yourself when you listen to music with no vocals is space. You're basically putting a track out that's going to pull your lyrics out, right? And it's going to create space for you to fill in the blank, but it's going to take you on a journey. The notes are going to modulate. They're going to go up. They're going to go down, right? Music is not balanced. It's harmonious. There's highs, there's lows, but blended together, it makes this journey. And when you listen to things like opera music or instrumentals or very intentional music like this, what you're doing is you're basically laying a foundational track, like a baseline that you, your intuition, your soul, and your brain utilizes to stimulate your creativity, to stimulate your connection with yourself and your relationship with yourself to then write your track. And so number four is instrumentals. Number five is a secret weapon. And I'm, I'm, I'm not joking. This is an actual secret weapon. If you do this, I guarantee you it will rocket ship your results. Every single person that I know that's successful does this. Every single one of them. Like, I'm not making that up. Like, it's not an anomaly. You could go through the Rolodex on my phone and text any one of them, and they would all tell you that they do this. And so number five is they listen or I listen to incantations or affirmations. Incantations or affirmations, positive affirmations, statements, commitment statements, like I'm a loving man, I'm a good husband, I'm beautiful. Like I actually said that today. I looked in the mirror today and I, t- I posted a picture on Instagram in my stories flexing. I was like, I'm strong. And I am. I am. But listening to incantations or affirmations is an amazing way to do it. Now, there are tracks and tracks and tracks out there in the world of other people's incantations and other people's affirmations, which work, but I'm about to give you the secret weapon. I want you to write down on a piece of paper a script for your future self, but I want you to describe it. If you fast forward three years and you're like, who do I want to be? And you name it like, I want this, I want this, I want the house here, I want this. I'm like, cool. What traits does that person exhibit? And you're like, they're committed, they're loving, they're passionate, they only work three hours a day. They do an hour of stretching every day. They do a half an hour of breath work. I'm like, I want you to list all of those things out. And you're like, okay, cool. And then when you list them all out, I want you to download this app and it's called Subliminal. Not sponsored. I use this app. It's called Subliminal. And I want you to record that entire thing in an I am statement in your own voice. I am successful because I am loving, compassionate, and caring. I wake up every morning and I look at my horse ranch after my 30 minutes of breath work in my gratitude practice. I walk into the kitchen. I wrap my arms around my significant other's weight so I kiss my kid's head and I send them off to school because I only work three hours a day. And I want you to record the story of your life three years from now or two years or one or five, whatever. I want you to record it in present tense in only positive language. I want you to talk about the behaviors. I want you to talk about the traits. I am blank. I am blank. I am blank. And I want you to record it in that app called Subliminal. And I want you to listen to it every single day, especially when you're moving. Go for a walk and go listen to it. Go for a walk and go listen to it. Okay. That's number five. And then number six um, is empowering music, empowering music. And, and I've been alluding to this the whole time, but I got to call it out. There is no way that your life is getting better, and I'll be the bold one to say it, your life is getting better by listening to sad, depressed, drama-filled music. There's no way by listening to this person cheated here, and this one did this, and this one stole this, and this one did this, that that is doing any good for your soul whatsoever. And so empowering music is anything that you can have an integrous conversation with yourself and be like, this is helping me move forward. This is helping me be better. This is helping me feel better. This is empowering me to do better. That's the music you get to listen to. So the six ways, the six ways that you can increase your brain's ability to learn while exercising, because that's what we're calling this, but while moving in general and take these practices elsewhere, not only when moving, but in your calendar, number one, silence. Number two, audiobooks that propel you forward. Number three, shamanic music. Like I said, DM me and I will send you all my best playlists, my breathwork playlists, uh, my meditation playlist, my favorite musicians for this. I'll send it to you. Just DM me and I'll send you a whole dump of it. Uh, Number four is instrumentals. Number five is incantations or affirmations. And the secret weapon is the ones that you record in your own voice. 
And number six, empowering music, empowering music. So those are the six ways that you can set yourself up to win and increase your results by programming your brain with positivity when it's in that increased state of reception while moving or exercising, which will catapult you ahead of everything else. So that's what I got. So here's my challenge for you. My challenge for you is to try one. My challenge for you is today, as you're listening to this, to look at your calendar. When am I going to the gym again? When am I going for a walk again? And you have to pick the moment and then pick the modality. Is it going to be silence? I actually challenge everybody to do silence first. So I would challenge you to do silence first, but do silence and then incorporate this into being a part of your day. Because here's the thing. What's the worst that could happen, right? What's the best that could happen? I want you to be consistent about this. I want you to try it. I want you to flex this muscle because here's the thing that I know. You listening to this, you're the gift. There will never be another you. Your perspective, your paradigm, your inputs are what make your business successful, what make your life successful. It's your personality. And you need to spend time sharing your message more and the world's message less, which means we need to practice being in a relationship with our own message, with our intuition in the space that we create so we can read our own story to the world because that's what makes us different. And so that's my challenge for you. So if you're still listening to this because you made it through my level of crazy, thank you. Uh, Thank you for being on this journey with me. This is what all the podcasts are going to be like. These episodes feel great to me. This Monday show feels awesome to me. Me sharing what's coming up for me feels awesome. Um, And I am going to ask you. And so please, from the bottom of my heart, like I'm being serious uh, because I don't understand how somebody could listen to 100 episodes or 50 episodes of value and then when asked to go take 30 seconds to leave a review, they don't do it. So I'm going to say that. Please. If you found anything of value, please go leave a review on iTunes or whatever, Stitcher or whatever, all these little platforms all that you may be listening on. Please take the time to go leave a review for me. It helps other people find this and please share the podcast. That is my ask for today. So it's been another episode of the Mind of George Show. Remember that relationships will always beat algorithms and you will either see me in the next episode or you will hear me in your earballs. But either way, I'm gonna take a sip of my coffee I'm going to go do another round of breath work because I got more emotions coming up today and I'm going to celebrate this podcast. Uh, I'm going to celebrate this because I feel like myself. I feel like you hear me, you know me, you get me and uh, I feel like you're on my team. So thank you. Have an absolutely beautiful day. I'll see you in the next podcast or I'll hear you or you'll hear me. One of those things. And uh, now it's time to cue the outro. Bye.